So what is the difference between commercial farming and subsistence farming? Well, here we're looking at a harvester combine and a tractor, and this is commercial farming, commercial grain farming to be more specific. Now look at this picture. This is also commercial farming. This was painted in 1828, and it depicts a story that took place about 2,000 years ago, and it is also commercial farming. The word commercial is based on the word commerce, which means buying and selling. So commercial farming is food that you grew intending to sell. Now, so what other kind of farming is there? Well, if you grew up in a city anywhere in the world, you would think of it as, you could call it personal farming, but you might also call it gardening, right? If you garden vegetables and then your family eats them, that's the opposite of commercial farming. But of course, it's done outside of cities in places that aren't usually the United States or Russia or China, and it's called subsistence farming, which you could call survival farming. And that's where you're growing it because you and your family are going to eat it. Okay, so we've done it. We have defined commercial farming and subsistence farming. And we could just stop right there. But I think it is important to take a little bit of time and unpack the word subsistence because it carries a lot of baggage. So look at that first syllable, sub. We already know that means below. And so if you, if you think about existence farming versus subsistence farming, what you're really saying is that it's worse than some other form of farming, right? It's barely getting by. It's death around every corner. And that concept that if you aren't using farming to make money, then you're not doing it right is so imperialist. But if you go onto YouTube right now and type in the word homesteading, what's going to come up in your search results? are a bunch of these formerly imperialist populations that used to say this kind of farming was not good, they are now re-embracing it. And so traditional cultures have been saying all along it's great, and now suddenly the people who were telling them it was wrong, well, it's right again or something. All right, so before we part ways, I'm going to ask you to hang out a little bit, and we're going to do a really quick field trip to a wind farm. Little windy out here. This would be a great place for a wind farm. Yeah, we're getting closer. Closer. Now look up on that hill, and you'll see kind of a power station. think is where all the power gets collected and then it comes down through these poles and wires and goes back all the way to Portland. But look at this. The family who owns this particular plot of land is making money both wheat and wind. And the wheat takes labor, but the wind is like nothing because the, the company is renting, uh, you know, some little plot of their land to have this this turbine on. And, uh, and so there's no labor for the farmer. It's all rental income. So this is kind of cool from here. I can actually hear the turbine turning. And they, they look deceptively small. Um, the, we can talk about the different parts up there, what they call each part. Because there's a rest stop nearby, we're almost there, and it has a lot of information on it. But, you know, from here, it doesn't look that big. All right, we just pulled up to a rest stop. We can still see the turbines over the hill. And this rest stop has some really cool information about those turbines. And it, it shows us that these turbines are the same height as a 38-story building. 
they have a weight similar to a Boeing. The blades have a length that is about 10 cars, bumper to bumper. The foundation requires 35 fully loaded concrete trucks. And the nacelle, which is that back part that we were talking about that looks pretty small when you see it from certain angles, that is actually the size of a school bus. Okay, so here's from wind to energy, and they have this really cool diagram. Rotor is the part that moves. It has a shaft that goes to a gearbox, converting wind energy into mechanical in energy. Then that drives, you know, there's like a dead bug on here. That drives a uh, generator, and that is transformed into uh, electrical energy, which has been sent on wires uh, to, you know, it, it's sent on power lines back to uh, Oregon, I think. I don't know. It, it says here it's, it's, a, it's Sun Edison and Avista. Avista is the, our local electrical company, and Sun Edison, according to this, manufactures solar technology, evidently also wind, because this isn't solar. Naff Ridge, I guess that is where we are. Naff Ridge near, uh, between Spokane and Pullman, Washington on uh, Highway 195.